good morning to all of you today we are going to start our discussion on various topics of industrial engineering so the first topic that we are going to cover is materials management there are lot of topics that we have to cover in this subject on industrial engineering so today we are starting with the most basic topic that is the materials management how much importance do we give to the materials management in our daily life so let start the discussion with a very simple example of buying potatoes from the market all of us go to the market to purchase so many different kinds of things now suppose we want to purchase tomatoes or the potatoes or any other vegetable we will go to the market we will see that what is the rate we will compare the rate among all the vegetable vendors and then we will purchase from the vendor who is supplying the things at the cheapest price moreover we will see that if there is some discount available if we buy more number of potatoes or more quantity of potatoes so suppose we buy 10 kg potatoes we will get some discount in the price if we buy 1 kg or half a kg the discount will be less so we have to take a decision that how many potatoes we should buy so that our daily demand is met and we are not short of potatoes whenever we plan to prepare a vegetable so we know that for a particular week or for a particular fortnight we will be having a demand for 5 kg of potatoes so should we buy all the 5 kg of potatoes at one go or should we buy the 5 kg of potato in two goes or in three goes depending upon the price fluctuation that is there in the market suppose we feel that after 10 10 days or after 15 days the rise of the veg, the price of the vegetables is going to change or it is going to be very high because of certain weather conditions or because of certain strike by certain people or due to some other problems which we are not knowing what we will do we will stock up the potatoes so that we are not short of the vegetable whenever we have to prepare our food so such type of decisions we are always taking in our life so we have to take a decision that when we should purchase how much we should purchase and at what price or at what cost we should purchase so all these decisions we are taking in our daily life so these decisions are to be taken in any industry which is suppose manufacturing a finished product based on certain raw materials so they buy the raw material they transform into different finished products and the finished products are then sold to the market so they have to take care of the materials that come into the uh, industry and then they go out from the industry in the processed form so materials management is one of the most important rather i should say one of the lifelines of any manufacturing industry or any other industry which is related to the materials aspect so today we are here to discuss some of the tools which are used in materials management so let us start our discussion we although the materials management is a very vast aspect we will be focusing our attention on inventory management but at the start of the lecture we will see that what is the broad scope of materials management where materials management is required and then slowly we will focus our attention towards the inventory management now at the start we need to understand that what is the basic definition of materials management so on your screen you can see a definition i'll read it for you materials management is the planning and control of the flow of materials that are part of the inbound logistic systems so you can see that it is the planning and control of the flow of material so we have to plan that how much materials are going to come and how they are going to flow inside the industry from one setup to another setup that we call as the work in process and then they go out of the industry in the processed form so inbound logistic system means that within the industry so logistics that is inbound that is coming and then going out from the industry we have another definition on your screen on materials management a total concept invo involving an organizational structure unifying into a single responsibility for the systematic flow and control of materials from identification of need through usage and accounting of the same so we have to see that already in the previous definition the flow we have already seen that flow of material is planned as well as it is 
control so here we are also seeing that the systematic flow and control of material from identification of need through usage and accounting of the same so there is a need that this material is required then we have to see that how it is used in the industry and we have to manage the accounts also that what was purchased how much we are left with and what will be the further requirement so the cycle keeps on rotating that identification of the need is there that this uh, this material is required after this much amount of time and then we have to take care of the usage aspect and finally the accountability of those materials that have been purchased in order to transform them into the final product so what are the major objectives of materials management so one by one we will see what are the objectives of materials management like the first one is support operational requirements now operational requirement means that any industry which is operating it is transforming certain amount of raw materials into final products so in order to support the operational requirements we require the materials so the materials will help us to transform from raw material stage to a final product stage similarly it manages the material process efficiently and effectively now we know that we cannot suppose we get a discount i am going back to the example with which we started this lecture we know that if we buy 100 kg of potatoes the rate will certainly be lower as compared to buying 1 kg of potatoes but can we buy 100 kg of potato and keep it in our house that is not quite efficient and an effective way of managing the materials that in our case is the potatoes because we know that after some time the potatoes may start to uh, wear out or may start to get spoiled so we have to take care that how much quantity we have to order so we have to take a very efficient and effective decision that how much quantity we have to take care of while operating so in any industry this decision has to be made that the minimum amount of money should be spent for holding the materials inside the store so materials management helps us to manage the material process efficiently and effectively efficiently means that we will be able to save some money for the industry and effectively means that our purchase or our purchasing doctrine will be very very effective then the third major objective of materials management is we have to select develop and maintain sources of supply so there may be number of suppliers number of vendors who will be supplying the material to our company so we have to select them that whatever quality we require they should be able to uh, give us that quality or able to provide us that quality or able to supply us that quality and we have to develop new and new vendors because we cannot be directly related to one or two vendors only because sometimes because of the price fluctuations or because of certain market conditions the vendors may not be able to supply us the required amount so we need to have different options available with us so we need to sell, select develop and maintain the sources of supply so materials management will help us to do that then develop strong relationships with other groups that has already been explained in the previous point then support organizational goals so organizational goals we set certain goals for our organization so materials management will help us to achieve those organizational goals then develop integrated strategies that support organizational goals so different strategies will be formulated by the materials management team in order to achieve this organizational goal or in other words we can say in order to support this organizational goals like suppose an organization has its goal has one of its goals that whenever the customer wants their product should be available to the customer so if we do not have a very effective and efficient materials management process then this goal sometimes may not be achieved so an effective materials management will help us or help the organization to achieve all its goal and it will support the organizational goals then what is the of materials management so till now we have seen that materials management is an important aspect of any organization for effectively and efficiently running its operations now what are the scope what are the areas where materials management can be applied so it it is required in materials requirement planning and control so it is uh, materials requirement planning there will be a complete lecture on materials requirement planning what is materials requirement planning where it is used what is uh, the control in materials requirement 
then we have to see that procurement procurement is one of the most important aspects which is related to materials management because it gives us an advantage over our competitors if we are able to procure the raw materials at the minimum possible price then inventory control that we will be seeing the in the topic of inventory management that what are the various tools that are used in inventory control then receiving and inspection falls under the scope of materials management transportation from one place to another that has also to be taken care of because materials handling is one of the most important points that has to be taken care of in any manufacturing industry then material handling already i have spoken about it then disposal of materials is also one of the most important aspect especially in today's scenario we are seeing that every now and then there are very strong legislations coming for the environmental friendliness so each and every industry has to take care of the materials that it is releasing or that it is giving to the environment suppose some effluents are being given to the are being uh, given out as part of the industrial process into the environment or are released into the environment then it has to be checked whether those materials are easily disposable or they are cause, going to cause certain harm to the complete environment or to the local environment so disposal of materials also falls under the category of materials management just to give an example suppose we are working with composite materials the disposal of these materials is or the norms for disposal of these materials are very very stringent and one has to plan in advance that what is going to happen to this particular product that we are going to make out of composite material so disposal of materials is also one of the most important scope of materials management which has to be taken care by the materials management team of the organization so it falls under the scope of materials management and last but not the least the value analysis now value analysis basically means that we have to find out the alternatives which give us the cost effective solution to a problem now suppose we have we are manufacturing a particular product with one particular material suppose we take an example of this mouse this mouse is made up of a particular plastic and it cost for a uh, the cost of this mouse may be fixed to suppose rupees x in value analysis a part of the materials management team would always be working on designing and redesigning this mouse and finding out alternative materials which can provide the same function but at a relatively lesser cost so that is also a scope of materials management in which we are able to find out that which other material or which other process can be used in order to give a more cost effective solution to a problem or to the manufacturing of this mouse so we have seen in this particular slide that the scope or the areas of materials management are very 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 wide so we have seen that there are so many areas which have to be tackled by the materials management team so this therefore is an important aspect of industrial engineering as well as this has to be taken care of by any organization that is working in this field of manufacturing or of final products we based on certain raw materials now what are the responsibilities from the scope now we come on to the responsibilities we have seen that what is the scope so many different areas have to be taken care of by the materials management team of the manufacturing plant or of the organization now there are certain major responsibilities or the certain major goals with which the materials management team works they have to take care of all those uh, scope but they have to work with certain constraint so what is the constraint they have to focus initially on cost reduction already i have told you that why cost reduction is important because with the example of the mouse we have been able to explain that this is made up of a sip uh, a material and it has been made by a particular manufacturing process now can we change the manufacturing process or can we change the materials by which it has been made so if we are able to make it by some other material but its function should be effectively achieved its function should be reliably achieved another important thing is that we can make this mouse out of another material but the quality as well as the reliability may decrease so in value analysis we are not compromising on the quality and reliability of the mouse or the of the material of the mouse we have to develop it so that the quality is maintained the reliability is maintained but the cost is reduced 
so cost reduction is one of the most important points that have to be taken care of by the materials management team so they have to redesign the materials they have to buy the materials they have to order the materials they have to take care of all the aspects of materials management keeping in mind that the money that they are spending on managing the materials should be reduced now second is the optimum service level so optimum service level means that whenever the manufacturing process is going on suppose i take an example of a assembly line in assembly line the raw material starts from one end and it moves along the path and finally the final product comes out at the other end of the industry so in that complete assembly line different parts are assembled on to the on to the base structure and then finally we get the final product so as and when the assembly is being done along the path so many materials are required to be assembled so suppose at one particular point the material that has to be fitted in that particular uh, raw material or that particular base material that is not available then the whole assembly line will stop so the it is the responsibility of the materials management team to provide the optimum service level it means that whenever there is a requirement of a particular material in the assembly process it should always be available if it is not available then the process will stop which is not a case that is required or that is desirable by the authorities or by the organization because it will lead to huge amount of losses and losses means that loss of business for the organization so materials are directly related to the profit making of an organization then it is also the responsibility of the materials management to assure the quality of the products that they are or the raw materials that they are buying so quality assurance the, there are different measures or different methods to check the quality that is that we will discuss when we discuss the quality related issues in industrial engineering then low level of capital tied up already i have given example that if the prices are less for a large quantity it is not desired that we buy a huge amount of quantity and then keep it inside our stores so that has to be taken care of that we have to de design the procurement cycle in such a way so that large amount of capital is not tied up with the material so the capital tied up should be less and the last is the coordinated interdepartmental effort so that is also a responsibility of the materials management because the purchase manager will not be able to place an order for a particular requirement inside the industry if the people who are on the shop floor do not communicate to him that this thing is required so if he is able to get the particular order a uh, uh, particular indication or particular communication from the shop floor that this material will be required after 10 days then at least he can start the procurement process so that at the end of 10th day or before that he is able to procure that material for the people who are working on the shop floor so the coordinated interdepartmental effort is also required and it is the responsibility of the materials management team that there should be a very good coordination among the but different Uh, people who are related to materials management aspect within the organization because lack of this is going to harm the profit of the organization or is going to result into losses because the process will stop if on the shop floor the material is not available then the workers will say that okay the material is not available we cannot perform our duties therefore it is seen that if at a proper moment of time a communication is passed from the people on the workshop or the people of the particular shop to the purchase department then they can initiate the order so that is a very very important part or the very very important responsibility of materials management team now materials management first part in materials management we are that we are going to discuss is procurement although we are not going to go into much depth related to procurement our major focus will be on inventory control so but the procurement is also one of the most important uh, scope of materials management and it has to be taken care of by the organization now what is the importance it contributes to the competitive advantage of the firm so already i have told that if we are able to procure the raw materials at a very competitive pricing or at a very low price as related to our competitors then we will be able to transform that raw material into the final product at a relatively lower cost and if we are 
uh, competing with them at the same price the margin of profit that we are getting will be much more as compared to our competitors because the raw material cost also adds up to the total selling price of the product or i can say the total cost price of the product so that reduction in that raw material cost is going to help us in order to be more competitive and we in order to make more profit from the same type of product and significant portion of the logistic cost is also saved so we have we can see that if our procurement is very efficient and effective and we are able to procure the raw materials at right price and at right time then we will be able to save a large amount of money for our organization and we will be able to make huge amount of profits then importance of item and service purchased products and services purchased by a company are not all the same so all the time it i i have taken number of times example of one particular item only but there will be large number of items large number of raw materials that will be procured by the industry some are more important than others and require greater procurement attention now there may this is the point is very very valid and very very clear that some equipment may require more attention from the procurement team and some equipment may require even very less attention from the procurement team so we can say one of the criteria for classifying this can be that if item is very very costly we can say it requires more detailed attention from the procurement team and if it is very very cheap and it is not adding too much to the cost of the product then we can be little bit lenient with the procurement process the quadrant technique enables the supply chain manager to assess the relative importance of each item based on the degree of perceived value and risk now there is a quadrant that we will discuss at a later stage that will help a supply chain manager or a procurement manager or a materials manager to take a decision that which uh, item requires more pro uh, attention to, uh, towards procurement and which item requires less uh, attention towards procurement so the the other things that have to be taken care of is the value and the risk value already i have told if the value is more it may require more attention and if the risk involved is more then also it requires more attention so on the basis of value and risk it can be segregated into different items that some items may be high value high risk or low value low risk and then the quadrant helps us to take a decision that in which quadrant this particular type of material will fit in so that we will see with the help of a quadrant then how to manage the procurement process so this is very very simple i have already started the lecture with one of the most basic examples of going to the market and purchasing the potatoes we go and then we have a relative market study and then we purchase from the vendor who supplying the quality that we desire at the minimum possible price so same basic principle is utilized for procuring the materials in the industry also first thing is to determine the type of purchase that what type of purchase we are going to initiate whether it is a completely new purchase or it is a straight rebuy or it is a modified rebuy so if it is new then the whole procurement process has to be started from the very beginning if it is a straight rebuy already suppose we have bought a laptop we want to buy another laptop so the same order or a repeat order can be given to the vendor from whom we have bought the laptop the third is the modified rebuy because why i have taken an example of a laptop because in information technology in computer science and engineering the things are changing at a very fast pace so today i have bought this thing maybe after one year there may be another model available for the of the same company but at a but at a relatively lower price so then i would modify my buying process i would order for a modified laptop but at the same price so with either we will be buying a completely new product new material or we will be buying a uh, straight rebuy or we will be using a modified rebuy procedure to determine the type of product that we are going to buy then identify the type of purchase then we will see that what type of purchase we are going to make determine the necessary levels of investment of time and information that how much time will be required for this process how what information will be required if suppose the it is the item that we are going to procure is a proprietary item directly it can be bought because there will be only single supplier for that particular thing now we can also see that the more complex the purchase 
the more time needs to be spent and more information needs to be gathered to get it right the first time so if it is a very very simple product then not much of effort is required on our part but it is if it is a complex product then although the definition between complex and simple also needs to be understood but we can say for the time being that if it is a product which has number of suppliers with number of relative pricing and number of uh, models that are available for that particular product then the purchase process becomes a little bit tricky because so many models are available so many different companies are making it so many price ranges are available then we have to spend more time and more information is related to the purchase of procurement of or to the purchase of that particular product so time required will be more as well as the information required will also be more then perform perform the procurement process so once it has been identified that which particular model which particular product we are going to purchase then we can very easily go forward with the performing the procurement process so do those activities that are necessary to effectively make a purchase and satisfy the users requirement so who are the users if we are talking about a manufacturing industry the users are basically the people who are working or who are using those materials on the shop floor or in the workshop so they have identified the need that this is required and then the procurement team is going to procure that material so once the material has been procured so they will be now using it according to their requirement so do those activities that are necessary to effectively purchase a per effectively make a purchase and satisfy the user requirement then finally evaluate the effectiveness of the procurement process were the users need satisfied so are the people who have just given the who have identified the need who have just given us an idea that this is the thing that has to be procured are they satisfied or was the investment necessary so could the investment have been avoided if there were other some material some other materials available already with us in the inventory then those materials could have been used so then we do this type of uh, post procurement uh, thinking that whether the investment that we have made was necessary or not so we can see that these are four basic steps which are required in any procurement process and as simple as said this is not as simple so many things have to be taken care of so we have seen that it requires time it requires information and then the users requirement have to be made and then we have to make a feasibility decision that whether the investment that we have made is really required or was it necessary or not so if it was necessary we have spent the money we feel that okay the users requirements have been met because there was no other alternative available with us but we have to first check all the alternatives and then we have to take a final decision that we are going to make an investment on procuring these materials then what are the concerns the con concerns are the cost of materials and the cost on materials so we have to take a decision that what will be the cost of materials and what extra money we are going to spend on the materials then we have to take care of the timely delivery so as to have smooth flow and avoid delays so already i have told i have given an example of an assembly line so if the materials or the raw materials or the sub assemblies are not available which have to be finally put on to the base product or to the base assembly if those materials or sub assemblies are not available with us then it is going to result in the interruption in the smooth flow of the assembly line and it is going to cause unavoidable delays which are going to result in the loss to the company so timely delivery of materials is a major concern whenever we are procuring a material and the service centric approach has to be taken care of already i have told what is service level so that service level should always be available if certain materials are required we should have certain quantity of those materials always available within our stores so coming on to that particular thing now inventory coming forward from the procurement the service centric approach we know that always we should be able to provide the service or the able to supply the materials which are required by the shop floor or the people who are transforming the raw material into the final product 
so what is inventory basically so we need to understand the basic meaning of this word called inventory now inventory basically is the stock of items kept to meet the future demand so now we are trying to understand what is inventory now inventory already as i have stated that it is a stock of items kept to meet the future demand right now let us take an example that we are managing a store in that store certain amount of material is coming and it is supplying to the manufacturing shop floor or to the assembly line now assembly line i am taking an example of a automobile industry that the chassis starts from the beginning and so many things so many other equipment sub assemblies are assembled on top of it and finally we get a complete automobile it can be a scooter it can be a uh, i can say i can take an example of a car so the raw material is coming it is being stored and then it is being supplied to the assembly line the rate at which the material is coming and at the rate at which it is being supplied to the assembly line if this rate is equal to this rate then there is no need of holding the material here i think i have been able to make a point that if this material the amount of material is coming here it is reaching in this store and from here this material is going to the assembly line where it is being used so from here and this rate this rate and this rate if this rate is same then there is no need to store the material because whatever we are getting we are directly using it there is no need of the store but this type of case is not always possible and it is not a case in all the industries always the rate at which we are receiving the material and the rate at which we are using the material will always be different moreover we have to always place an order and there will be a lead time in between the placing an order and receiving an order therefore we need to keep a adequate store from which we can always take a material this material can be taken at a constant rate that daily 10 components are taken or it can be taken at a non continuous or maybe it can be taken at a intermittent rate that sometimes 10 pieces are required sometimes 5 pieces are required sometimes 20 pieces are required so always we have to keep a stock of items so i think the explanation is very very clear that the rate at which we are receiving the material from the market is not the rate at which we are consuming it so always we need to store certain material so that is given in the inventory that what is inventory inventory is the stock of items which has been kept to meet the future demand suppose we know that for the next 2 and a half months or for the next 3 months i would be requiring this many number of pages so i am not always going to go to the market to uh, purchase the pages i will purchase certain amount of material that i will kept keep in my store and that i will keep on using whenever the need will be there so that is basically the inventory so purpose of inventory management is that we need to decide that how many units to order and when to order we have to decide on a quantity it can be 100 500 10000 One lakh, and we have to take a decision at when we should order this. Now, suppose we are using a particular item in uh, industry. Suppose some components are being used. Suppose I take an example of nuts and bolts. So we know that every week we are using hundred nuts and bolts, and when we are using it continuously, the stock of nuts and bolts will keep on decreasing. Now I have to take a decision that at what level I have to. reorder for example i again come to the example of potatoes with which we started our uh, lecture on materials management we are daily using the potatoes maybe every two days we are using the potato in one or the other vegetable now we will see that only half a kg or maybe 200 grams of potatoes are left with us we have to go to the market and purchase more potatoes so we have to take a decision that how much we have to procure or how much we have to order and when we have to order it so we have to take a decision now the decision can be in two ways either we decide on a quantity that after whenever 200 grams or 250 grams or 300 and 300 grams of potatoes will be left we will be going to the market and procuring more potatoes or we can say that every sunday there is a market 
for vegetables where we can buy the material at a very cheap price or there is a mandi where we can go every sunday and buy so then we are fixing the time period that every sunday we have to procure so two types of systems are there one is putting a constraint on the quantity and other, another is putting a constraint on time that every week we have to buy so we have to take a decision in uh, in an industry that which of these two policies we have to follow that whenever the quantity falls to a particular level then we should order or every month or every two months we have to order irrespective of the quantity which is already available with us so any of these two policies can be followed but the important point to understand is that the stock stock or the storing of items is very very important for any industry so we will see that what is the requirement what is the need actually of inventory management now what are the components that fall under the inventory what are the different types of materials that we will call as inventory so inventory basically is raw materials that we are procuring from the industry or from our different vendors it can be purchased parts and supplies it can be work in process because many times students do not think that work in process is also an inventory item so work in process that is partially completed products are also falling under the broad umbrella of inventory then the items being transported from one place to another place that will also be called as inventory and the different tools and equipment used on the shop floor or used in the industry will also be called as inventory if it is a service sector industry then the inventory items may be different but these items as mechanical engineers we feel that in a, any manufacturing company we feel that these are the items that fall under the broad umbrella of inventory now inventory and supply chain management now supply chain management is one of the hot things these days many people are putting in efforts to optimize their supply chains with effect of cost with effect of logistics and so many management people are working in this area of supply chain management so inventory is also an important aspect of supply chain management so there is a bull whip effect what is this bull whip effect demand information is distorted as it moves away from the end use customer now the end use customer knows what he wants his demand is taken care by the salesman of a particular company who is in direct contact with that customer now the salesman will frame his forecast that okay this is what the person requires and then this he will pass on this information to the next head of the department or the next person who to whom he is responsible and this way the information process will keep on climbing up the hierarchy and finally a decision will be taken but usually it has been observed that that this type of information is distorted as it moves higher up in the hierarchy moreover with passage of time the end use customers demand his taste his choices may keep on changing so the company is not always able to identify that what it is going to produce and in what quantity it should produce so that all the customers who require their product or who have given an uh, nod that they are going to buy the product of that particular company are actually going to buy the product so the demand information whenever it is distorted the company is not able to take a particular doctrine that they are going to produce this much item over a period of one month or two months or four months so when that kind of accurate data is not available with the company they cannot directly rely on their vendors that whenever the need will be there the vendors will be able to supply the raw material in order to overcome this type of a situation certain amount of raw material is purchased and it is stored in the inventory so that whenever the demand changes you have the adequate amount of material available with you so that you can match the requirements of the customers who whose whose requirements are always changing so the higher safety stock inventories are stored to compensate this type of the fluctuation in the demand so whenever the demand is fluctuating you need to have certain inventory certain store available certain stock of materials available in your store so that you are able to meet the demands of the customer this is much more relevant in present scenario because we are seeing that for each and every product there are so many companies who are competing to increase their market share take an example of a motorcycle so many companies are manufacturing motorcycles they are competing with each other to capture the market they are going they are going one step further they are advertising they are giving 
customer the choice in the color in horsepower so many things are happening in the competitive environment so all the companies want that whenever there is a demand by the customer their product should be available to the customer so that he does not go to the competitor company therefore always the company wants that whenever the demand is there they should be able to process that demand and in order to process that demand they have to keep a stock of materials always available with them then sometimes there is seasonal or cyclic demand on your screen you can see the second point is seasonal or cyclic demand so whenever seasonal or cyclic demand is there there also we have to keep a stock of raw materials always available with us suppose umbrellas are required in the rainy season all of us know sometimes there may be rain in other seasons also but the sale of umbrellas will be much more in the rainy season so a company that is manufacturing the umbrellas they have to keep a stock of the different inventory items which are required in order to manufacture the umbrella so if those are available maybe they are available at a lower price at some off season and if the company that is manufacturing the umbrellas wants to procure those material just before the start of the rainy season they may have to pay more price so the optimum decision is that they should buy the raw materials required to make an umbrella or to manufacture an umbrella at uh, that particular moment of time when the raw materials are available at the cheapest possible prices so the in order to take care of or in order to take advantage of those price discounts that are available in the off season the company that is manufacturing certain items which are seasonal in nature they can procure those materials and then may keep an inventory of those materials so that they are able to take advantage of the price discounts then inventory provides independence from vendors this is the first situation that i have told that the material is coming and then it is being stored and then it is being used so if the rate at which we are receiving the material and the rate at which we are using the material this is same then there is no need of keeping an inventory but the case is that we are always dependent on the vendor who is supplying the material and we are using that material suppose there is some uh, price fluctuation and we are not able to negotiate the prices with the vendor and he stops the supply of raw material our smooth flow of the manufacturing process will stop and that as a company we do not want then what is done in order to make our process smooth we will always keep a stock of items so in this way we will become independent of the vendors because we always have certain stock available with us to live for certain amount of time or in order to keep our process going in the meantime we can find out for some other sources of supply and we can switch over to some other vendor but if we do not have a stock then the problem will be much more then inventory provides independence between stages and avoid work stoppages so that is also a very important point if inventory is there let's take an example that the product or the work in process that has been manufactured on one machine goes to the other machine now suppose this machine is not functioning properly or has broken down and if we have certain in certain processed material already available which has been processed on this machine this can be used for some time on the in order to give input to the subsequent machine but if there is no inventory available with us then the whole process will stop so it will the inventory provides independence between stages and avoids work stoppages so these are some of the salient advantages or the salient needs of holding an particular inventory now why inventories are required although i have explained each and every point but in order to make the audience much more clear regarding the use and the requirement of the inventories the, I, i am just going to explain all these points once again and in a very very clear manner so why inventories are required to safeguard against the uncertainties in price fluctuations supply conditions demand conditions lead times transport contingencies etc so already we know that inventory is required because of all these uncertainties now the uncertainties may be in price price fluctuations sometimes we are getting the raw material at a very competitive price at other time the price of the material is relatively higher or maybe we can say much higher so 
what as a company I would like to take a decision is that we are going to procure a material whenever the prices are much low. So, whenever the prices are less we will buy and then we will stock the material. For example, we can say stocking of wheat in our household. So, wheat price also keep on fluctuating throughout the year. Whenever there is more supply of wheat, the prices may be less. Whenever there is less supply of wheat, the prices may be more. So, whenever the supply is less and demand is more, then the prices will be higher. So, we will see that if we have adequate storage space available with us, we are going to procure that particular item at a relatively lower price and stock it to be used whenever the prices will be higher. So, we want to take the advantage of the price fluctuations and whenever we take the advantage of the price fluctuation, if we are buying the material at a lower price, we will have to keep it in stock. So, in order to use, use the material whenever the prices will be higher. Similarly, the supply conditions already this example we have seen that if the supply is not regular then we have to always keep a stock of that particular item. Then the demand conditions, sometimes the demand conditions may change, sometime you require more, sometime you require less. So, the demand fluctuation may also result in stocking up of the inventory. Then the lead times, lead time basically is the time between placing an order and receiving an order. So, there is always a time between placing an order and receiving an order. So, in certain models that we are going to cover in the second lecture, maybe on inventory management, we will see that what basically is lead time, when do we place an order, when do we receive an order. So, if the lead time is 0, as soon as we place an order, we are going to instantaneously receive the amount of order that we have placed. But if there is a lead time, maybe 5 time, 5 days, sorry, Today we place an order, after 5 days we are going to receive the material. So, the lead time also changes. Similarly, the transport contingencies. Now, suppose we are receiving the material by road. If there is a flood or there is any other catastrophe, the roads have been damaged, then the supply lines are cut. We are not able to get the raw material available and the whole process stops. Let us take an example of a thermal power plant. All of us know in thermal power plant, the power is generated by burning the coal. That is one of the important raw materials which is used. So, now if the coal is not available, the plant has to stop, which is not desired by the organization because in order to restart the plant, huge amount of investment is required. So, if transport contingencies are there, then also in order to overcome these type of contingencies, we need to keep a stock of materials. So, right now I am spending some more time on this particular topic because we need to understand that why inventory is required because the later parts of the lecture are related only when we identify that yes inventory is required because somebody may challenge that no inventory is required. There have been certain techniques in industrial engineering where people want that minimum inventory minimum lead time should be there as you want the material you should get it but in our scenario there are certain constraints under which we have to function and for that particular reason we have to always keep an inventory. Now other points why inventory is required is to reduce the machine idle times by providing enough in process inventories at appropriate locations. This, ex this thing already I have explained in the previous slide that no machine should be idle. If in process inventory is there, the process will always be smooth and the product even if one machine has broken down the delivery of the product will be regular if we have adequate in process inventory. The third point is to take advantage of quantity discount economy of scale in transportation. So, this is also a very valid point. So, in order to take the quantity discount, we will take one example of quantity discount also and try to uh, optimize that what should be our procurement procedure, what should be the quantity we should order or we should procure if we want to take advantage of the quantity discount. Similarly, the economy of scale in transportation is also very, very important. Now, suppose we are paying for one truck load of material from one place to another place. So, we are paying for that and we are only getting half the truck, 
half of the truck is empty then we what we can do is in order to economize that process we can order a little bit more so that whatever is coming it can come in a single go and the money is saved for the organization so these are very simple things but these are incorporated into the industrial decision making in order to economize the complete process of procurement and managing the materials then to decouple operations that is to make one operations supply independent of the another supply this helps in minimizing the impact of breakdowns shortages etc on the performance of downstream operations moreover moreover operations can be scheduled independent of each other if operations are decoupled so we can see that if we are able to decouple the operations from one another then we will be able to more effectively and efficiently manage our manufacturing process so managing the materials or always holding a inventory of the materials is going to help us in order to smooth out our process of manufacturing if even if there are breakdowns there are shortages of material if the operations are decoupled from one another the process will always keep on and there it will result in more efficient utilization of time and resources and we will be able to save the money that would have been lost because of the breakdown so holding an inventory also turns out to be a profitable proposition for any organization then to reduce the material handling cost of semi finished products by moving them in large quantities between operations so this is also going to economize the whole operation then to reduce clerical cost associated with order preparation order procurement so that will also be minimized so if we are frequently keeping on ordering then the clerical cost and the other cost associated with procurement will add on to the total cost of the product so if we are ordering in bulk we will be able to save this much amount of money for the organization so till now we have seen that the materials management is one of the most important aspect of any organization and it requires adequate attention on part of the organization we have seen that whenever we have to procure a material we have to take certain decision what is the procurement process what is the importance of the procurement process what advantages can be derived if we take care of the procurement process or if we effectively and efficiently manage the procurement process and then we have seen that a certain amount of stock or certain amount of inventory has always to be kept in order to economize the complete process and in order to avoid the stoppages so in the next lecture on materials management we will see that what are the various tools that are used in inventory management so that we are able to decide that what quantity we should order at what intervals we should order and what are the different formula and formulations to help us or to guide us in order to take these decisions thank you Thank you.